Hello, uh, welcome to the presentation of uh, my dissertation, which, as you have heard, is titled uh, Dynamic Adaptations of Synchronization Granularity in Concurrent Data Structures. So I will start to explain what the middle part of this uh, uh, title means. The synchronization granularity of a concurrent data structure describes how granularly we do synchronization in that uh, data structure. So in the top here, we have an example of a data structure that uses coarse-grained synchronization. Uh, here, all accesses are protected by a single uh, lock structure. In the bottom is an example of a data structure that uses fine-grained synchronization granularity. As you see, we have a lock structure in all of the nodes in the data structure, and this allows uh, uh, concurrent threads to, to work at the same uh, time in different parts of the data structure. So now you have enough knowledge to understand the full title, Dynamic Adaptation of Synchronization Granularity in Concurrent Data Structures, means that uh, at runtime you change the synchronization granularity uh, of uh, data structures, for example based on how much contention is detected, and the, the main data structures that I propose do this in a very uh, gradual way, as you will see. And why would you like to do this kind of uh, dynamic adaptions of the synchronization uh, granularity? So of course there are many different uh, user scenarios for concurrent data structures. And there is no uh, single synchronization granularity that fits all of these uh, scenarios. I will illustrate this with a concrete example. So I, I will show you uh, two different implementations of a data structure that represents a set of items and has support for an operation called uh, a range query. And then I will show how these two implementations perform in two different scenarios. I will first mention that the, the range query operations uh, is an operation that takes an uh, atomic snapshot of all items in a given range. So you give it starting key x and end key y and you will get back uh, all the items from the data structure with the keys between x and y. So let's uh, uh, start to look at an example uh, that uses coarse grain synchronization granularity. I call this the IM tree. So this is based on a general method proposed in uh, 1990. So here we have a mutable reference that points to an instance of an immutable uh, data structure. In, in my case, I use an immutable uh, tree, which is a balanced uh, binary search tree. An update operation in this uh, data structure uh, takes a snapshot uh, of the data structure by reading the mutable reference. And then based on this uh, snapshot, it uh, creates a new uh, instance reflecting the update. And uh, I have illustrated here where the item 60 is inserted. And this can be done uh, very efficiently when you, have, uh, when you base this on a, a search tree, because as you can see here, you only need to create a new version of the nodes uh, from uh, the route to where you insert uh, the new uh, node. And once you have these uh, updates in place, you can do uh, the range query uh, operation extremely efficiently because they just need to read the mutable reference and then they can do the snapshot, uh, uh, the, the range query in the snapshot without needing to, to care about other threads. But unfortunately, if we have parallel updates, this will not. Uh, uh, scale very good on a multi-core machine. They all need to update this uh, single mutable reference. So instead one might want to use a, a concurrent data structure that has fine-grained synchronization granularity. And I use uh, the lock-free KR search tree as an example of that. This structure looks like this. Here all the items that are stored in the data structure are in leaf nodes. Uh, that you can see here. And the internal nodes are mutable. <coughs> and this allows uh, parallel threads to operate uh, in different parts of the data structure uh, at the same time. But when you have range queries in, in this uh, data structure, then um, they might need to traverse many of these immutable leaf nodes. And while they are doing this, they can conflict with update uh, operations, which uh, <coughs> uh, might make them need to retry some steps. Uh, so so the, this data structure is much better for updates, but not as good for range queries. So what does this actually mean if we look at how these uh, data structures perform in two different uh, benchmark scenarios? Uh, so here I show you two scenarios where these data structures are used and I, I show you the uh, throughput operations performed per microseconds on the y-axis and then the number of threads that are doing operations on the x-axis. 
And uh, the only difference between these two benchmark scenarios that you see on the left and to the right is the size of the range queries that are uh, pe performed. So when we have small range queries, we see that the data structure use fine grain synchronization granularity scale much better. And this is because of this scalability bottleneck in the uh, IM tree. But when we have large range queries, the situation is almost uh, completely reversed. Then the, the IM tree uh, scale much better due to uh, the long time in which uh, range queries can conflict with other operations in the uh, log free KI research tree. So what we say here uh, is that uh, none of these approaches uh, seems to be ideal because ideally we would like to have a data structure that can perform very well in both of these uh, uh, scenarios. And this is uh, exactly what I've tried to uh, accomplish in my uh, work to, to get data structures that uh, perform very well across a wide range of scenarios. So the central thesis that I'm defending in my dissertation is that the concurrent data structure that dynamically adapt their structure based on user statistics can perform significantly better across a wide range of scenarios compared to concurrent data structures that are non-adaptive. And my, my dissertation uh, consists of five different published uh, papers that you see the titles of here. Uh, the first three uh, papers is about uh, uh, data structures that adapt their synchronization granularity to the workload at hand. Paper 4 is about a, a synchronization uh, technique, so I will not have time to speak about this in this uh, talk, but this uh, synchronization technique is used in, in paper 5, uh, where I present a very efficient uh, concurrent priority queue. So let's uh, dive into uh, paper 1 which is titled A Contention Adapting Approach to Concurrent Ordered Sets. And uh, in this uh, data structure, uh, paper, <laughs> I describe a data structure uh, which is called the Contention Adapting Search Tree. Uh, I will call it the CA tree from here on. Uh, <coughs> this data structure can be used uh, to implement uh, data structure that represents sets. It can, be, it can be used for key value stores and in-memory uh, databases. Uh, it supports single item operations that uh, insert, remove, and look up uh, an item. And it uh, supports uh, bulk operations, for example, bulk uh, insert that uh, takes uh, uh, a number of items as uh, input and, and will insert uh, all of these items atomically to the, to the data structure. And it also supports uh, range operations. So I have already told you about the, the range query, which is one range operation. And it also supports range updates, which atomically update all items in, in a given uh, range. So in this uh, paper, I have uh, uh, sketches for correctness proofs that, uh, uh, for showing that uh, all these operations are linearizable, deadlock, and livelock free. And what is uh, new and special about this uh, CA3 data structure is that it dynamically adapts its synchronization granularity uh, to the workload at hand. So this is uh, how the CA3 uh, looks like, it's structured. So all the items that are uh, stored in the data structure, they are located in sequential data structures that you see here in the bottom. And this can be, uh, for example, balanced search trees like AVL trees. So you, it can also be other data structures. The important thing is they, they, that they can be split and joined in an efficient way. And you will see soon what I mean uh, with that. And these sequential data structures, they are protected by uh, locks in uh, what I call base nodes that you see here in the middle. Uh, and uh, <coughs> associated with these locks uh, are uh, statistics uh, counters. So these are, are, are the where I record how much contention of, uh, is detected in the locks. And in the top here are uh, routing nodes. So they, this doesn't contain any actual uh, items that are just uh, used to direct the search for a particular item, so this, they form a, a search tree. So, uh, <coughs> uh, normal update operations that just uh, operate on a single item, they will just search uh, in the routing nodes until they reach a, a base node, and then they will lock this base node, and this, when this base node is locked, it's recorded if uh, some contention was uh, detected or not, and based on this, uh, this statistics uh, a counter associated with the lock will be modified. So the statistics counter will be increased if some contention was detected, or otherwise it will be uh, decreased. Uh, so this is how 
the data structure record uh, uh, contention and this will guide the adoption of the synchronization granularity as you will see soon. Uh, there is also locks in the routing nodes and uh, some flags and in the base node, so I will not go into how th these are used now, but they are used for uh, when the data structure adapts uh, to uh, contention. Um, <coughs> uh, so, so normally, uh, searches in the data structure don't uh, don't uh, look at these locks and flags in the in the routing nodes. So let's look at how uh, the CA tree adapts itself to uh, contention. So initially, it might look like this. All the items are stored in a single sequential data structure uh, protected by the lock in a single uh, base node. When parallel threads operate on this data structure, then uh, this statistics counter will be uh, gradually increased and eventually it will reach a threshold that will uh, trigger a high contention split. And what this does is that it splits this sequential uh, data structure uh, into two and place it into two new base nodes that are linked together by a routing node uh, like this, and the old base node is spliced out. So now the, the data structure has more uh, fine-grained synchronization granularity. And then if contention is still high, this uh, process can continue like this, so the data get, structure gets more and more fine-grained uh, synchronization granularity. And at some point, uh, the contention might drop in some part of the tree, for example, in the uh, leftmost base node here. And then uh, the statistics counter in that base node will gradually decrease until a threshold for low contention join is reached. And, the, and what this does is to take this sequential data structure that are rooted in this base node and join it with a sequ uh, the sequential data structure of this uh, neighboring uh, base node. And uh, <coughs> then this uh, new uh, joined uh, uh, data structure instance is placed in a new base node that will replace in this case, the, the routing node with the, the key 11, like this. So, so now the, the data structure have a more coarse grain uh, synchronization granularity. So this is how the CA tree uh, adapts itself uh, based on co detected contention. And uh, here is uh, how uh, uh, the range uh, operations works in the CA tree. Uh, here is an example with the range 58 to 67. So the range operation just traverses the tree, locks all base nodes that may contain items in the range, uh, and then it performs uh, the, the range operation in the sequential data structures that are rooted in these uh, locked uh, base nodes. And uh, <coughs> once this is done, before these uh, base nodes are uh, uh, unlocked, this uh, statistics counter is also modified. So if the range operation uh, need to lock more than one base node, the statistics counter is decreased. And this is done so that uh, future similar uh, range operations uh, will uh, need to uh, access uh, fewer uh, base nodes. So this means that the CA tree does not only adapt itself to contention, but also the types of operations that are operating uh, on it. So before I, I, I show you how the, the, CA, the performance of the CA tree is in some experimental evaluation, I will tell you about another data structure uh, called the lock-free contention adapting search tree, which is described in paper three. And uh, I developed this data structure because uh, I wanted to explore if one could do this kind of uh, contention adaption in a data structure that have better uh, progress guarantees, that have lock-free progress guarantees for its op operations. So in paper three, I uh, pro uh, describe a data structure that is called a lock-free contention adapting uh, search tree. And uh, I will from here on call this the LFCA tree for short. And this data structure have lock-free uh, insert, remove, and range query operations. And it has a lookup operation that is even weight-free. And all of these operations are uh, linear linearizable. Uh, so here is the, uh, how the structure of the LFCA tree, uh, uh, and uh, as you can see, the structure looks very similar to the CA tree, but now we don't have any uh, locks uh, anymore, and uh, the LFCA tree has an additional requirement that uh, uh, in the, the sequential data structures that are rooted in base nodes here, they need to be immutable uh, data structures. So in my implementation I use uh, 
uh, immutable trees, which, as I said, is uh, balanced uh, uh, search trees. But uh, other data structures could be used there uh, as well. And uh, <coughs> this data structure also uh, adapts itself to uh, its synchronization granularity in a similar way, uh, way uh, as the lock based uh, CA tree. But uh, uh, as it needs to provide this uh, uh, better progress guarantees, uh, <coughs> this uh, is done with uh, uh, algorithms that are uh, a bit more uh, complicated. And I will illustrate this by showing you how uh, the LFCA tree uh, do uh, range uh, queries. Um, so here is, uh, I will show you how uh, a, a range query that queries the range 69 to 99 will work uh, uh, in an LFCA tree that looks like this. So the first thing that a range query do is to create a storage node that you can see here. And then the range query uh, searches for the, 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 the first uh, key in the range and ends up in a, a base node that it will replace with a base node of a special type uh, that you see here. And uh, uh, once this is done, this uh, uh, new uh, special uh, base node, it will be irreplaceable, which means that update operations can't uh, uh, replace this uh, uh, node. So when update operations come here, they see that oh, this is a special base node, so they, they can't replace it. Uh, but then to, to, to still uh, provide the lock-free progress guarantees, you can't just let the update operation wait. Uh, so uh, what you need to do is to, to let the update operations help the range query uh, complete. And that you can do because this uh, uh, special uh, base node, it can contains enough information about the range query uh, so that uh, it can help the, the issuing thread complete this uh, uh, range query. Uh, so the next steps of this uh, range query, it can not only be done by the thread issuing the range query, but also uh, other threads. And the next step is to uh, replace the next uh, base node that may contain items in the range like this. And, and this process is continued until uh, all the base nodes that uh, may have items in the range are replaced. And then to complete the range query, a join is created of all this uh, sequential data structure containing items uh, in the, uh, the replaced uh, uh, base nodes. And this join is uh, uh, stored in this uh, storage node. And this is uh, what will linearize uh, the range query. And uh, it's also what makes this uh, a special base node uh, replaceable again. So now update operations can uh, replace them. So this is how range queries works in the LFC tree. How does the LFC tree actually perform? So let's look at uh, uh, how, how it works in the same benchmark scenarios that I showed you in the beginning of the talk. So the LFC tree is now uh, the, the black line. And you see that in the scenario with small range queries, it's even better than uh, the data structure that uses fine grain synchronization and likely the uh, lock free KRE search fee. And then in the scenario with large range queries, it's almost identical to the IM tree, the example of the data structure that uses coarse grain synchronization and likely. So, some more detail about the experiments uh, or the, this uh, oh, experiment that you just showed show the results for, from. Uh, threads do a mix of uh, uh, insert, removes, and, uh, and lookups and range query operations. And the range queries have a uh, range that is uh, of a, a size up to some certain size uh, max. And uh, I, I run this uh, on a machine that has uh, uh, four uh, NUMA nodes, Intel processors with eight cores each, and hyper threading. So the machine has uh, a total of 64 logical cores. And uh, the benchmark is implemented in, in Java uh, because uh, the, the data structure that I compare with had implementations in Java. So to, to make it uh, uh, possible to compare with them, I also implemented uh, uh, the LFCA tree and the CA tree in Java. In, in the paper, I, I have uh, described other benchmarks uh, and uh, uh, a lot more results. Um, and uh, I compared the, the data structure from paper one and paper three, the log base CA tree and the LFCA tree. Uh, with uh, the data structures that you see listed here. These are uh, recently performed high performance data structures that uh, uh, have support for uh, range queries. 
and all of these uh, previous uh, uh, works in this topic, they, they, they propose data structures that uh, are non-adaptive, so they, they use a fixed synchronization uh, granularity. So, uh, uh, now we look at a, a scenario with small range queries. Uh, we see that the LFC A3 is the best one, <coughs> and uh, uh, lock base CA3, this uh, uh, purple uh, line, uh, is the second best. And then uh, the data structure use fixed synchronization granularity, they follow uh, pretty closely after. But then if we go to slightly larger uh, range queries, then we see that the, the gap uh, widens even more. So the LFC tree is still the best, and then the lock base CA3, and then the other ones uh, come uh, quite far behind. And then uh, we go to even larger range queries, and then we see that uh, uh, the example data structure that uses coarse grain syn synchronization granularity, the IM tree, is almost uh, uh, identical uh, to the uh, lock based and uh, lock free uh, CA tree, and other data structures are, are, are very far uh, behind. So, uh, the bottom line, the, the thing I want you to uh, to, to, to take with you from these experiments is that uh, the uh, adaptive data structures that I propose they perform well across a very wide range of scenarios while the other data structures they perform uh, well in certain scenarios that fit their synchronization granularity but they, they can't perform as well across uh, a wide range of scenarios. So to summarize uh, the LFCFA and the lock based CA3 automatically balance the trade offs of coarse grain and fine grain uh, <coughs> synchronization to fit the, the workload at hand. And this makes this uh, data structure scale better than related concurrent data structures over a wide range uh, of scenarios. Uh, paper 2, uh, th that's a paper that I, I wrote uh, because I wanted to inv investigate how. Uh, the CA tree will work in a uh, realistic uh, system. Uh, so, what I want to answer in this paper is if the CA tree can improve the scalability of X. And X stands for Erlang Term Storage. And this is a key value store that is integrated into the Erlang uh, programming language. It's implemented in, in C and it has a complex API with range operations and and bulk uh, operations and uh, a lot of other uh, uh, oper operations. And uh, <coughs> the current uh, uh, implementation of uh, X is based on an ABL tree uh, protected by a single lock. And uh, in this paper I show uh, experimental uh, oh, uh, experiments uh, that uh, show uh, how an experimental implementation based on the CA tree uh, would uh, uh, scale and uh, oh, an implementation of the of the X. Uh, so here is just one example from the results that I show in this uh, uh, paper. Uh, the CA tree is the orange line, and the uh, blue line is the current uh, um, X implementation. Uh, and as you can see, it's a huge difference <coughs> you, you can get from from uh, integrating the CA tree into this. Uh, uh, Erlang term storage. Uh, paper 5 is about uh, a completely different type of, of data structure than what I've discussed uh, uh, previously. It's titled the contention avoiding concurrent priority queue. So here I, I, I wanted to investigate if this uh, uh, approach to uh, change the data structure uh, depending on uh, how much uh, contention is detected could be apl applicable in other situations as well to adapt other things than the uh, synchronization granularity. So paper 5 is titled the contention avoiding concurrent priority queue. And uh, it's about the uh, concurrent priority queue, so I'll start with some background. Uh, so concurrent priority queues typically support uh, an operation to insert an item and uh, uh, a delete min operations that uh, removes and return uh, the item with the smallest uh, uh, key uh, from the data structures uh, and the concurrent priority queues they are important for many parallel applications for example uh, they are used in scheduling applications and for many parallel uh, best first search uh, algorithms 
And the uh, current uh, concurrent priority queues, they can be divided into uh, two uh, categories. In one category, we have uh, those that use uh, strict semantics. And uh, what I mean with that is that uh, in these uh, priority queues, uh, the delete min operation always returns an item which uh, had the smallest key at some point between the invocation and return uh, of the operation. Uh, but uh, uh, since uh, uh, typically you only have one item with the smallest uh, key, this uh, uh, type of uh, priority queues that use strict semantics, they usually have a scalability bottleneck in the delete min operations. So instead people have proposed uh, to use concurrent priority queues with, uh, that have a more relaxed semantics. And what I mean with that is that delete min operation may return an item which was actually not the smallest at some point between the invocation and return uh, of the operation. And different uh, uh, concurrent priority queues with the relaxed semantics that have proposed to have different uh, guarantees for their delete min operation. And our contribution in this paper is a new uh, concurrent priority queue called the Contention Avoiding Concurrent Priority Queue. I will call it the CAPQ for short from here on. And what is new and special about this is that it dynamically turns on and off uh, different uh, uh, relaxations based on how much uh, contention is uh, detected. So I, I, I motivated with this uh, graph here where we have performance on the y-axis and uh, the level of re relaxation of a priority queue that uh, two different applications use. And uh, what I want to illustrate uh, here is that different uh, applications they benefit from different uh, levels of uh, relaxations in the concurrent priority queue. So if you have a fixed relaxation le level, it will not be ideal for all applications. So one will have, like to have a, a concurrent priority queue that can perform well across many different applications by adapting its uh, uh, relaxation uh, level. And this is exactly what the CAPQ uh, do. Here is uh, uh, how its structure uh, looks like. It consists of uh, uh, two uh, components. One is a, a global uh, component which is shared between all the threads that is using the uh, concurrent priority queue that you see here uh, in the top here. Uh, in my implementation I base this on a, a skip list with fat nodes and uh, you will see soon why this is uh, um, a, a good uh, choice. Uh, and the, the, the CAPQ also have a thread local uh, component so there is uh, there are uh, some thread local data. So this thread local data is there is one instance of this for for all of the threads that are using uh, the data structure. <coughs> but uh, uh, yeah, so so the CAPQ have two different relaxations <coughs> that can be uh, turned on or or, or off. Uh, when both of them are off, the CAPQ uh, works as a, a concurrent priority queue with strict semantics which means that the delete min operation just uh, removes and returns the smallest item from this uh, global concurrent priority queue um, and uh, insert, just insert a single item uh, to the global concurrent uh, uh, priority queue. Uh, but then when uh, <coughs> delete min operations frequently experience contention, then the uh, uh, contention avoidance techniques, the technique for delete min operations is turned on and when the, this happens, the delete min operation will not. We'll first look at this uh, delete min buffer here in uh, the, the thread local data of the thread executing this delete min operation. If the delete min buffer is empty, it will, instead of just gra grabbing a single item from the global component, it will grab a whole node with a bunch of items, as you see here. When a delete min operation happens and the del min buffer is non-empty, it will not uh, look at the global shared component at all. It will just uh, see that there is a, an item in its uh, delete min buffer and it will remove it. And then this will continue until the delete min buffer becomes empty again. So this uh, effectively reduces the uh, uh, contention because only one in a, uh, a certain number of uh, delete min operations uh, need to to access shared uh, data. So this is how the contention avoidance uh, technique works for in, uh, delete min operation. And then there is also a contention avoidance technique uh, 
for inset operations that is only activated when there, there, there is a contention frequently detected in the insert operation and how this works is to uh, to create a delete min uh, an insert buffer here in the thread local data and then up to a fixed number of uh, items uh, can be stored in the insert buffer instead of going to the global concurrent priority queue uh, so eventually this uh, insert buffer will be filled and uh, uh, items will be placed uh, in the uh, global concurrent priority queue uh, component instead so this reduces the, the contention in the insert uh, operation and the, uh, the, the delete min operation will always look at both of these buffers and take uh, the smallest item uh, that exists in, in both of these so in this case it will uh, remove four here from the insert buffer so this is how uh, the CAPQ uh, uh, works and how it uh, uh, its uh, uh, techniques to avoid contention um, operate. So I, I compare the CAPQ to uh, the uh, relaxed concurrent priority queues that were published uh, uh, when I, I was doing this uh, work. Uh, they are all listed here. And uh, uh, so I will tell you how the CAPQ differs from this. Uh, this uh, uh, related uh, data structure. So first of all, the CAPQ only activates relaxed semantics under contention. So this makes it possible for the CAPQ to work well, both when the contention is high and also when it's uh, low. And uh, it also makes it possible for the CAPQ to automatically adapt itself to the application that is using the, the CAPQ. And another important uh, difference is that the CAPQ doesn't access shared data in every delete min call, which the, the previous uh, work did. And this, uh, of course, uh, uh, makes it possible for the CAPQ to cause less uh, traffic in the memory system, which can be uh, very expensive. But unfortunately, uh, this also makes the, the precision of the delete min operations uh, uh, worse in certain scenarios when delete min uh, calls happens infrequently because then the items in the buffers can get out of date uh, but uh, in, in many applications of uh, concurrent priority queues uh, delete min uh, operations happen frequently by all the threads uh, that uh, are, are uh, active in the application so, so this is not a problem for, for many of the applications for, of uh, concurrent uh, priority queues uh, I evaluate the CAPQ and compare it to the related uh, uh, data structures in an uh, application uh, that is a parallel version of Dijkstra's single source shortest path algorithm that finds uh, the, the shortest path in a graph to, to, from one node to all the, the other nodes in the graph. And this is a particularly good uh, application to evalu evaluate uh, priority queues with uh, uh, relaxed semantics. And the reason for this is that uh, when the semantics is too relaxed, when you get uh, items that are uh, too far uh, from the actual min, from the delete min uh, operation, uh, then threads will uh, start to, to do work that will uh, be wasted in some sense because uh, it will do the work based on, on uh, incorrect values, so this work has to be repeated uh, later. So, so that's why the the relaxation level of the data structure also affected the performance. And I, I used the same machine as uh, uh, I used in the previous uh, experimental results that I showed you. It has 64 logical cores. So let's first look at the uh, results when uh, this application is uh, applied to a graph based on a real-world uh, road uh, network. And <coughs> So first of all, we see that uh, none of the concurrent priority queues scale very well um, after uh, 16 threads are used. Uh, and th this is also when more than one processor uh, chip is used and you get more uh, overhead uh, for um, getting data between the cores. And then the CAPQ, uh, the blue line here, is uh, on top, but it is, is followed quite closely by, for example, the 
uh, KLSMM uh, concurrent priority queue. Uh, but uh, uh, if you look at another scenario uh, that is uh, based on a uh, real world uh, social uh, network uh, graph, then uh, the KLSM uh, priority queue uh, has uh, much, much worse uh, scalability, while the CFP queue is still the best one and, and uh, it uh, scales uh, uh, quite well. Uh, up to 64 uh, threads uh, in this scenario. So the bottom line again is that uh, uh, the CAP queue is a, a data structure that uh, adaptively uh, changes its semantics based on detected contention. And this uh, helps it performs very well across a wide range of scenarios uh, compared to the data structure that are non-adaptive that can perform very well in certain scenario that fit their relaxation level, but not across a wide range of scenarios. And the, uh, the, the, the results that I present in the paper shows that uh, the CAP queue outperforms other relax relaxed priority queues uh, in this uh, uh, single source shortest path uh, benchmark when you look uh, on a wide range of, of <coughs> instances of this uh, uh, benchmark. So to summarize uh, uh, this uh, talk, I talked about uh, uh, papers one to three that uh, are about uh, the uh, log-free CA3 and the log-based CA3 that dynamically adapt their synchronization granularity to fit uh, the workload at hand. And uh, paper five is about uh, the CAP queue that uh, uh, change uh, which uh, relaxations that are turned on and off based on uh, detected contention. Uh, and this makes it perform uh, very well across a wide range of scenarios. So uh, these papers, I claim, strongly support my thesis, which, which is that concurrent data structures that dynamically adapt their structure based on user statistics can perform significantly better across a wide range of scenarios compared to concurrent data structures that are non-adaptive. Uh, yeah, Th thank you all for, for listening and at attending uh, this talk. Thank you, Shell. Uh, <coughs> thank also the opponent for the for the introduction. So.